From Sweet 16 here at Scott Trade, welcome to Blues Insider, John Kelly, my partner on TV, Darren Pang, the radio voice of the St. Louis Blues, Chris Kerber, joined by Blues General Manager Doug Armstrong. And Doug, I know it's been an up and down season, but your club currently sits in seventh place, and now you have six of your last seven games here at home. I guess you couldn't really set it up much better than that. No, uh, but we have to start winning some of these home right. games. Uh, our, our home record uh, isn't what we thought it would be this year, but we have a chance to uh, to put a good streak together here and get get ready for the playoffs. Army, any reason why a year ago you guys were so dominant here at Scott Trade, and this year it seems like it's the opposite? Yeah, we won more games. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's, a good, that's, easy. that's a good question and a really good answer. Yeah. No, I, I'm not really sure uh, why, why that was. I think we were... Uh, Certainly a difficult team to play against last year at home, and I think we have to get back to that. Uh, we had uh, real strong character players that, uh, and B.J. Crombie that's no longer here uh, that, that helped us uh, get that environment that it was not a good place to play. But I think we're seeing uh, uh, some of these other players starting to step up, and we do have to make this a hard place to play. And you, you've got a lot of uh, different personnel that you mentioned. Following up on that, you talk about... Like skill players. I mean, Jaden Schwartz is a heck of a hockey player, but a different player. And same with uh, a guy like Vladdy Tarasenko. And uh, is this just part of the changing of the, the culture of the hockey club and the identity of the hockey club? Well, and I also think it's the evolution of young players coming in. Uh, we, we had a very good game the other day against the Blackhawks, and uh, it, was a, it was a man's game. It was a playoff game. And uh, I think that was the first time we'd seen Tarasenko and Schwartz really in that environment. And uh, I thought, uh, you know, that they're, they're going to be good players, but the more they can play in these games like that, but but ultimately in a game like that uh, or games this year in the playoffs, we're going to need we're going to need to be led by David Backus and, and David Perron and Stewart and Berglund. These are the guys that have have put in their time, and it's their team now, and they they're going to be the ones that are going to be leading us uh, as far as we can go. I'm going to follow up on that one second there, Curves, before you take a breath. They are cold right now. The, those main guys, they get power play time. David Perron. Patrick Berglund and Chris Stewart. And as a manager, is there anything that you can say that a coach can't say to those players? Well, we just talk about, uh, you know, I, I try not to overstep my boundaries, but I do talk to Ken. And the reality is, is when, when you played Columbus, where do they score their goals from? Right in front. Going to the net and three feet in front of the paint. And I don't think we're playing enough time in the paint. I don't think we're getting to that area as, as much as necessary to have success. And one of the sort of the glass half full thing after that Chicago game as uh, uh, I said to Ken it, now we can address this now and see if we have a response to it instead of waiting to be down 0-2 in a playoff series and try and have a response right now I, I think it's crystal clear what we're going to have to do to score goals and now are we capable of doing that you know we sat in Nashville and, and John you were there Darren you were in there and Dimitri Yashkin came off the ice after his uh, second skate with the hockey team and he stood in front of about eight people and just handled the questions and handled the media as if he had been in that locker room before. We're going to get an opportunity tonight to see Ashkin in his first game in the National Hockey League. Now, I know you, when we met with the season ticket holders earlier in the year, Hitch compared him somewhat to Yager-like with some of the plays he had, <laughs> which doesn't put any pressure on anybody really whatsoever. But when I followed up with a question to you, you said well, one of our goals is to get him signed when his season's done, and hopefully he could impact our roster last year. What happened... With him, what did you guys see from him that said, hey, let's, let's see what he can do now with, with a few games remaining? Well, we saw him play as well as he played this year in the uh, Major Junior uh, League in Canada. Uh, played a very good, uh, in a very good league in Quebec and was a dominant player. Uh, and then we get to the trading deadline and, and you're talking about giving away third, fourth, fifth round picks for players that you might have for a short period of time. And you're really not sure if they're going to help you anyways. So the thought process was, let's bring him in here. It's not going to, he doesn't become a free agent any earlier. So uh, we have to negotiate with him one year earlier, but that's really not an issue. So we, we thought we'd rather take a look and see what, what we have homegrown. And you look at a player like Sad, you look at Nugent Hopkins, you look at uh, Huberto, players at that age playing in this league right now. And uh, he's going to get an opportunity to show us what he can do. And uh, with TJ Oshie not playing again tonight, uh, it's, it's a great opportunity. And, and after Hitch said that about uh, Jose, we added Yager. I said, does he have any Gretzky in him too? <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he, he talked to him about Yager. He said, you got to downgrade it to Jose. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No, I'm, I, I'm personally not a big fan of making those comparisons. I think it's unfair to the young player, but, uh, you know, that's why Hitch is Hitch. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what have you, uh, and, and I'll throw this for you guys out there as well, but you, you see what the LA Kings did to win the Stanley Cup last year. Then you come into this season and you have an idea of how you want to build a team. All right? Well, what have you guys seen this year 
in, in terms of the all-around play of the league that, that, that shows you kind of what this team needs or where this team is going to need to go? Well, I, I think that, uh, you know, coming out of the last work stoppage, uh, two or whatever one that one was, <laughs> uh, you know, we, we really reinvented the game. You know, we took out the red line. Uh, penalties were, were at a premium. There was a lot more calls. I think coming out of this one, we, we realized that we like where the game is. And, you know, if any indication of our last four or five games, you're, you're talking maybe five penalties, five power plays total. So it's becoming a man's game again. It's becoming a, a big body game. And, and I personally like that. I, I thought the first period of that Chicago game was was entertaining. I thought the referees did a fantastic job letting the players get to the edge. Uh, when they went over, they were penalized, but they didn't take the emotion out of the game. They didn't take the physical play out of the game. And I think moving forward, you're going to have to have, uh, it's not, you're not going to have to have the physical size, but you're going to have to have the heart and the desire to want to play in ugly games if you want to be successful. I think that's a, that's, that's a really good analogy of that last game. And I think that uh, when you come out of that last lockout, I mean, it became a, a pond hockey game. And, and the soft perimeter players that teams weren't drafting and didn't sign as free agents, now they became valuable members of your team. And now, I know us as broadcasters, and I mean, you're, you manage the team, but we get frustrated with guys that won't go down the in, inside now because we're seeing the good teams. And we see Jonathan Taves every night. He goes to the blue paint every night. He pays the price to score goals. And when you don't see your players or other players around the league do that, you get frustrated by it. Whereas at one point after the last lockout, it was just accepted. It was just... Free will and well, you want to see, you want to see those battles. In oh, front absolutely. Of the net. Well, when the Blues signed Keith Kachuk, remember when Columbus had Adam Foot, and you're just drooling over. Wow, we get to see Foot and Kachuk go after each other, and you saw those battles, John, all the time too. In Adam Foot's earlier days, they, you want those battles coming. Back. Well, look at the Red Wings, and, and you know, a team that's won four cups since '97. People like Shanahan, Thomas Holmstrom, they always went to the inside. I mean, you just can't have skill guys on the outside, obviously. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, I, I really, I really like that style of hockey too because it, it, there's a premium to be paid, and that premium is is the is the desire and, and the competitive nature that you have. And uh, we're trying to find players that have that competitive nature. And I think if you do that, uh, you're going to be as successful. Army on the other side of the puck. Since the Leopold and Bolmeister trades, you guys have gone six and two, and allowed 11 goals. You have to be just obviously thrilled with the acquisitions and the way your team has played overall defensively. Yeah, obviously, I think we're, we're much stronger. We're much quicker to, to leave the zone now. Uh, one of the things, too, that might not show up uh, unless you're really watching it is, is the play of Bo Meester's ability to break plays up before they start. Mm -hmm. uh, in Chicago the other night, uh, Jonathan Taves, he's going to make a play in the corner, but Bo's got such a long stick, he gets his stick on that puck, and that play's dead before it even has a chance to evolve. So uh, it's just seeing those, those small things that I think help our team out is, is really uh, positive. I think Leopold has been a very good uh, uh, addition for Shattenkirk. Uh, and then also it gives uh, Jackman and Polak a real, a real purpose to what they're coming to the ring to do every day. Uh, ultimately, though, we, we do have to start putting the puck in the net. We, you know, you don't want to be. Uh, actually, I don't. I don't mind winning one nothing. No, <laughs> don't mind that at all. As long as but, 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 but I hate losing it? two one. Yeah. <laughs> right. Something you, about, something about, Leop something about, something the about tumbling puck. Well, Le Leopold's ability to communicate with the players on the bench. It was a game. It was it was late in the game, leading one nothing. It was uh, in uh, in Minnesota. And, and there was a puck that was fumbling around. And before Bradshaw could go down and kind of huddle the defensive core together, Leopold said, a fumbling puck with two minutes to go in a one nothing game. It's a fumbling puck. You don't use your stick and try to bang it out of midair. You use your, you use your skates, you use your gloves. You keep it in. It's a fumbling puck. And he had all the decor there, and, and, and it caught their attention. So Bradshaw said, well, check. That was, I don't have to deal with that anymore. But then in the, game against, uh, in the last game against Chicago with two minutes to go, there's Leopold in the crease on the far post. And I guess one of their players said something to me. He says, have you not seen the score? We're down by two. That's why I'm in the paint. <laughs> so he's got a, a personality that maybe the fans haven't seen yet, but hopefully we'll be able to relay that to them. Well, and also he, he's got that experience. And I, I think for, for Brad and, and Ken and Gary, the guys on the bench, mm -hmm. you know, when it comes from a player to a player, it has so much more effect than when it comes from a coach to a player. That, that internal accountability from player to player means so much. And, and having a guy like Leo here now that, that can share that and isn't afraid to say that. Uh, you know, we have players like Bacchus that are there now and Steen, but uh, adding other guys in there that are saying, hey, you know what, this isn't on to the coaches. This is on us to do this. And uh, hopefully that will be a benefit for us. All right, before we, we let you get out of here, uh, 
what's the latest update on TJ Oshie? Uh, I'm going to re- defer that one to the coach. Uh, you know, when we get to this time of the year, I think uh, uh, too many cooks in the kitchen talking about injuries isn't a good thing. So uh, I am avoiding that question. <laughs> <laughs> one thing for sure, he's not a player for tonight's game. Yes, that's right. true. He's, he's not. How about we leave it at that? Yeah. That's a good right. way to put it. Hey, right. thanks for joining us yeah. on Blues Insider. Lunch will be served shortly, so yeah. stick around for that. Yeah, I certainly will. I'm looking forward to it. Okay, <laughs> and when we come back I here, anything. We, yeah, it's coming. <laughs> food. It is coming. And when we come back here on Blues Insider in Sweet 16, we're going to break down tonight's Blues Canucks game right after this. This is the Blue Note. These are the legends of Oakland Avenue living on at the corner of 14th and Clark. This is Hall to Halak, Unger to Oshie, Brian to Bacchus, and Al to Petro. This is the Great One and the Golden Brett on the same line. This is local ownership and award-winning leadership with respect for our past and an eye on our future. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. All right, Blues Insider continues from Sweet 16. John Kelly, Darren Pang, and Chris Kerber. Of course, a huge game tonight, Blues and Canucks. Kerbs, I know we've seen the Canucks a couple of times this year. The Blues are one and one against them. What do you think is the main storyline tonight? Well, I I think, and we touched on this a little bit with Doug Armstrong, I think a big storyline tonight, uh, and even though Doug did what I think is right and kind of threw the gauntlet back down at the foot of the Bacchuses, the, the Berglunds, the core group of guys, Man, if you're a Blues fan, you've got to be intrigued with Dimitri Yashkin getting into the lineup. But I think an equally aspect of that story, and Ken Hitchcock wouldn't commit to it earlier, who does he end up taking out? You know, because you've had some guys that have played some very good hockey. A guy like an Adam Cracknell who's played very good, but he's on that fourth line. Does he just fill that role in, and do they give those top guys another chance, or does he sit somebody higher? And I think that's a, a something fans are going to have to watch. Cracknell's going to be the one sitting, and that's a shame. And that's, that's the bottom line. Adam Cracknell has played extremely well. Every time Adam Cracknell's recalled, he plays well. He does everything everybody asks of him. He wins battles along the boards. He funnels pucks to the net. He plays a good, determined two-way game. This is the difficulty in putting a skilled, young player. He's, he's a prospect. This, that's what he is right now in, in Yashkin. He's a prospect that had a really good one year of major junior hockey. You know, I played major junior hockey. Bradshaw, we won the Memorial Cup. We didn't, you, it doesn't mean you're, you're able to play right away, but he's been given a phenomenal opportunity here. But he's a top six forward, and he's going to play on a bottom six role. That's going to be difficult for him. So he's going to play with Porter. So Porter's going to be a guy with Reeves, and they're going to move, you know, be able to get him the puck and see what he's got. But it's not going to be a, 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 an area of the game that, that he's going to be familiar with. Right. Because you're not going on the ice every second ship like it was in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, you never know. Maybe he'll pull a Tarasenko like he did on opening night against Detroit, scoring two goals. Except that Tar- Tarasenko played with, with uh, Andy McDonald and Alex Seen and was top six minutes. Right. So you get pucks in different areas. This is going to be a chip it out, chip it in yeah. game yeah. for Yashkin, and that's going to be the difficult part. But and that's going to be the adjustment for him as well. But when the power play comes along... But we watched the power play yesterday. I watched pra- practice yesterday. There wasn't a whole lot of Yashkin on the power play. Right. So that'll be unfamiliar territory, other than going over a whiteboard and dealing that with the coaches. Well, and I think then, take that the next step, though. Okay, so what does that mean the rest of the way? So you know, if you're one of those guys, and, and you mentioned it, and I think apparently it was you that said Doug Armstrong, some of these guys have gone a little bit cold. I, I think what, what that means then is they know, okay, here's a guy that's yes. getting pulled out of the lineup that has been playing pretty doggone well. All right. Yep. And you know he's going to be chopping to get back in. It, if, well, if you're going to be yeah. successful against a team that's now leading their division, they just beat Nashville five to two. You know, although they did allow even 19 shots on goal to the Predators in that second period, you're going to have to have your guys firing in all cylinders. And and it's it's not a secret. Doug said it. We, we've all said it before. That puck has got to get to the middle of the ice, and you're going to have to make the game tough. Well, here, here's the guy. Here's the guys where the, the pressure's on. The pressure's on the guys that get power play minutes. The pressure's on the guys that have gone cold. Chris Stewart's gone last 11, one goal. Berglund's gone last 12, one goal. David Perron's gone last 15, if I'm not mistaken, if my writing's correct, zero no, goals. No goals, right. Okay, so, so if there's any opportunity during the course of the game, the reason why you have a skilled player like a Yashkin and it's not working out, it's an easy one. Uh, Hitchcock's been a master of that. Someone slides down, someone slides up. You yep. determine it halfway through the game. If it's not going for one of those top players that aren't being productive. Well, we saw that the last game with Porter jumping up. Yeah, then you slide in. is what we saw there. The Canucks, as you you guys said, they did play last night. They won in Nashville 5-2. Nashville's obviously a depleted roster right now. Luongo played in goal. We're going to get Schneider tonight. Mm -hmm. Panger, as a a former goalie, and I know you like to break down goalies, what what do the Blues need to do 
if anything, to get some pucks by Schneider? A number one is, is players to the paint. You have to back him off. He, he's, a, he's a technically extremely sound goaltender with good athletic ability. He gets to the top of the crease. So it's, it's not anything different than going up against Brian Elliott or Yarrow when they're confident. When they're confident, they get to the top of the crease. You want to get their butts on the goal line. You want to push them back. And the only way to push a player back it's, it is for players to go hard to the post, hard to the paint. And that's where you're going to be able to maybe get at, uh, at a guy like Corey Schneider. He's on a roll right now. I yeah. mean, ev everything about Schneider tells you exactly what they anticipated he was going to be, a, a star in this league. Although he, his he's last a great game, he didn't play well in Colorado. Yeah, well, uh, great goaltenders delete them and come back with stronger performances. That's, that's what's that, going to make them more you dangerous. That's what you did. That's right. right. Control, alt, delete. You have to have right. a real short memory. Well, and there's a difference, too, when you're playing a team. When you get Vegas out of your mind, anything's possible. <laughs> it's doable. All right, listen, I interviewed Alex Petrangelo, uh, you know, for our, our nightly interview that we do with him. And I asked him the question about defending against the Sedin Twins. Because, I mean, let's face it, those two guys are probably passing a pee around inside the womb the way they think like one another, right? Wow. So they're, they're going back and forth. Uh, he, and he brought up a great point. You really have to communicate and trust your teammates out on the ice because you can lose sight of one of the other guys. And if you're focused on the guy with the puck, you still have to know where the other one is. That communication will be really key for these guys. And it'll be our first good chance to see you know, kind of the revamped defensive core play against those two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're going to have the big boys against the Sedins, so that's going to be a, a great challenge for, for, for them and for the Sedins tonight. It should be a lot of fun. Yeah, it is. It's, you know, it's Bowmeister's ability to keep things on the outside. And, and I think the one thing about Jay, he's, he's played a lot against them. Being in Calgary, he's familiar. He was on the ice for 30 minutes. So, you know, like he... It's not like he's going to be able to break up every single play. You need support. Your centerman on centerman is going to have to be extremely strong. So even though it's the defensive pairings, Petrangelo and Jay Bomeister against them, it's still going to be Henrik Sedin and David Backus. And, and David Backus can't let him out of his sight. He's going to have to do what he does best, which is cross-check him in the ribs, the arms, the hands, <laughs> the slash, the hack, and the whack. But the minute you take your eye off him, is the minute they got eyes in the back of their head and they find something and else. And then it's still on him, you, even in that role, and we've talked about it, I haven't shied away from that, then he's also got to find a way to be effective in the offensive zone. So contain those guys you know defensively what, here's and, my, then, and then yeah, get here, the puck going Here's the other my way. thing about that. If you're, going to have your, if you're going to have David Backus defend and check, then the expectations on the offensive side of the puck, you know what, it's like... You just want them playing even. Well, you have to because, you know, you can't expect a, a player like David Backus or Alex Steen to play a 200-foot game every single game. You're going to spend a lot of time in your own zone. You don't have the energy to make a play going up the ice. You're just barely getting to the red line if you're hemmed in and get off the ice. So that's why your secondary players are in perfect spots. And yeah, that's, what's that's, just, that's, where Berg, that's where Berglund has to take advantage of it. But no, That's where David Perron has I to take advantage of it. I agree with you 100%, on the but at the same time, you still have a real decent amount of offensive skill there that you, you, you want to have chip in fairly regularly because it is well, the difference you, maker. Then, then, then you end up changing it, getting ready for a playoff run and changing it and don't have, you know, off that much take off. One spot. You know, if, David, if you're leaning on David Perron to be an offensive-minded player, then maybe he slides off that line and, and you make a little bit of change. But without T.J. Oshie, who always gets that responsibility. That's right. They, That's a big key. Yeah. You know, the, the Canucks and Blues have had some battles over the years, as we know, but it seems from where I sit, the Blues really match up well against this Vancouver team. They, they did lose in there a few weeks ago, but outshot them by a pretty good margin. Why do you, why do you guys think they, they play well against Vancouver? Well, I think there's a certain amount, amount of tenacity. Like, whether it's, whether it's Ryan Kessler, when he, you know, he hasn't been healthy for the majority of the year, so Kessler goes up now, and maybe he sees a lot of David back, because they've had some battles in their own yeah, right. Yeah. You know, maybe Berglund sees more of the Sedins, but Burroughs. You know, Burroughs is a, is a pain in the neck, as everybody knows. Yeah. He goes to the blue paint. You, sh you know, Barrett Jackman gets involved with with a guy like Burroughs. I, I, I just think the matchup is just a really good, I, solid matchup. And then they've got a, you know, they've got a lap here on the fourth line. And, you know, it's going to be imperative for the fourth line led by Reeves and Porter. It's not a game in which you don't get in their kitchen. I mean, it's important for Ryan Reeves to get in their kitchen and to be in front and center of that matchup on the fourth line. There's no coincidence, I don't think, that when you look at who, who are the teams that the Blues seem to be to bring their best against over the last few years. The Vancouver Canucks, one of them. The San Jose Sharks, yep. another one. These are big teams with some good skill, some very good goaltending, all the way down to And what happens? You go back and look at the most recent playoff history of the St. Louis Blues. They seem to be going up against San Jose a lot. They're going up against Vancouver a lot. And I think that is what's fueling the fire. They know what's coming up. You know, we've seen some little extra jam against the L.A. Kings now when they come and into Chicago. town. 
Yep. Chicago. Yep. So I, yep. hey, playoff matchups. It just fuels the rivalries for the next few years. All right. Huge game tonight, gentlemen. Uh, Fox Sports Midwest. Yes, is, at uh, 6.30 yep. pregame. And, it's going to be a brilliant uh, pregame show, too. Yeah. Is it? So and uh, and uh, are you guys on Y98 tonight? Yeah, we're on Y98 tonight. Uh, no, you guys are on Fo uh, the main channel, Fox right. Sports Midwest tonight. Uh, the radio side, we're on Y98 uh, this evening as well. Okay, hey. well, get your makeup ready for tonight. It was a... Uh, it was a really could, great joining you the other night or the other afternoon. It was Sunday, weird doing a radio with a guy wearing makeup. Yeah. Oh, he has a great face for radio, though. Yeah, I got to change my part for well, tonight. I noticed that. Okay. All right. <laughs> we'll see you guys tonight. Uh, thanks for joining us.